once again, thank you for coming. Welcome to CIFCON, I guess. Uh, it's really good to be here. I'd like to just in the beginning extend my deep gratitude to organizer for having me once again at this great conference. It's, it's really one of my favorite events uh, in Poland. So yeah, it's good to be back here in Gdynia. So what we're going to talk about today is Winti and uh, why this title, the group that wasn't, was it at the group, what happened, we will learn just in a bit. So a bit of the time schedule for today. <clears throat> First, a short introduction of why I'm even here and why am I talking to you about this uh, Winti group. Uh, second, we will have a short introduction on how to, how to define the groups at all and what do we mean by group, what do we mean by threat actor and so on. But the main, uh, the main body, the main part of the presentation will be uh, analysis of how the uh, Winti discoveries, published research, uh, disclosed campaigns, and so much, and so, uh, so much more uh, unfolded in terms of what was published. And second, an answer to the to those who might ask, so what? Like, what is, what are the consequences of taking a certain approach, and what what can we learn from this group? As we are here at TIFCON, and this is Red and Blue con uh, Conference, as you can see by my attire, I'm more aligned with the blue side. But on the side of the red, I hope that it will also support uh, adversary emulation team with perhaps working uh, on more high fidelity uh, simulation if the client will, or, or your customer will request that uh, you need to emulate Winti. So first of all, who am I? I'm working daily as a principal intelligence analyst at Quo Intelligence. So I mainly do threat research work and work directly with customers on providing tailored intelligence briefings, intelligence solutions, and supporting their security organization. Also from time to time, students of SANS 4578 might meet me where I'm supporting SANS instructors as a teaching assistant. And I run my own personal blog when you can read some of my free thoughts about the intelligence, security, national security at Counterintelligence Pal. Uh, feel free to reach me either at the conference or at those addresses. And just a standard disclaimer that whatever I'll be saying today is purely my own conclusions, thoughts, and so on, and do not represent the, the position, of, position of my company. So just one more short disclaimer, because we will be talking of how these, how these group, uh, how the group unfolded and what was the understanding of it. Uh, we will be, I will be naming and mentioning research of many, many great threat intelligence uh, teams. And by all means, I do not mean that if I come to a different conclusion, they are wrong or their analysis was bad or something like that. Uh, rather that uh, because of different intelligence requirements, we might approach the, the same situation in a different manners. So just a, just, a, just a quick disclaimer that this is our all, the research I will present is all very high quality, just we might have a different perspective. So sliding right at the, at the defining and, and tracking the various adversarial groups, Basically, we might approach this uh, issue in a twofold manner. We might approach it, but what's uh, commonly called a threat actor, which is represented by this nice FBI wanted poster on the left, uh, right hand side. And this is trying to establish exactly who are those actors. So who are the people on the keyboard, operators, and so on, like having this very particular visibility into a specific unit that is conducting activity, being it a criminal group or being it an intelligence unit or military unit. In terms of Winti, we will be talking about this APT-41 cluster as defined by pretty much United States government by now, and is composed of the intelligence officers. But the other solution that you might that you might come across and approach is tracking it by just activity. So the left-hand illustration presents diamond model of intrusion analysis, which means that you uh, that you aim to break down the activity uh, into specific observables, such as the infrastructure use capabilities. So the the malware techniques, tactics, and procedures for initial access the victimology, and based on that, regardless of who is sitting at the keyboard, 
you will be tracking like what is the representation of the group. Okay, so let's dive right in. And so the question is, who is this Winty hacker? What is going on there? And the answer is, Winty is not a group. Winty is actually a malware. Winty is a remote access Trojan that's got the versions for Windows and Linux and uh, has wide capabilities of, uh, wide capabilities of uh, allowing operator to interact with systems and files, commands, and so on. So this is it. Thank you for coming to my talk. But on a more serious note, the Winty as a group has been first defined by Kaspersky, but the, the kind of caveat is that it was not actually discovered by Kaspersky. So what happened in 2013 is, well, is we had this uh, very nice uh, research piece from Kaspersky that described group that is using this Winty malware and stolen certificates uh, to target video game companies. Although there was here a short, let's say, a disclaimer, or there was a bit of a misnomer, or not misnomer, but the targeting was much wider because it also invo uh, involved activist groups. But in general, because of this uh, wide use of the Winty tool, so this remote access tool, uh, and because of the use of stolen certificates and because of the victimology that was kind of defined, Kaspersky took this name that was uh, originally discovered by Symantec, so Winty Malware Group, and decided that from the, time, from the now on they will be tracking is as the group. And if you can see here, perhaps not from the, from the back, of this, uh, back of the hall, so at the very bottom of the screenshot from Kaspersky is that uh, we in uncovered activity of the Chinese origins and we track this uh, activity as a, as a Winty group. So uh, to further give you a background, uh, the group was discovered even earlier, around 2010. By 2013, community research, let's say, as a whole, start tracking it. But by then, the activity was mainly focused on very much financially motivated actions. So they were breaching these video game companies, and they were stealing the source code, or they were even doing cheats in-game to gain the in-game currency for exchange. So it was essentially the, this quite advanced malware was used to funnel the money out of gaming companies and we had stolen certificates. Some things were quite interesting to follow. And then around the same time in 2013, FireEye, now Mandiant, now Google Cloud's Mandiant, has published a research and they seemed to get a sense of what is going on because they published this very nice uh, piece uh, the, about the digital quartermaster. So they described how the various toolings and infrastructure is shared among the various groups, which uh, pointed them to the conclusion that uh, it is essentially like a development team, all the infrastructure creation team, that, uh, that uh, supplies the tooling to various activity groups as they are tracked in a different manner. So we had essentially this, this idea that what the researchers were tracking was not so much of a group of the on keyboard, uh, hands-on keyboard operators, but the development team that was supplying those tools. And this will have a, quite a bit of ramification as we go further. But here you can see on this, this bottom uh, screenshot from the report, the quote, uh, was about the, it referenced directly the Kaspersky report and the stolen certificates uh, were in fact, uh, were in fact the, the same ones that were used by the, by the Vinti cluster. Uh, and the Vinti itself by Mandiant I think is tracked as high noon and this was, this was a part of this, this, let's say, quartermaster effort. Then in 2014 we had a very, very extensive report on the, on the uh, activity that was, uh, that was tracked by uh, essentially a coalition of, of partners. There was Microsoft, Cisco, FireEye, iSight, Noveta, multiple groups involved. And they published this, this, uh, this uh, research piece, Operation SMN, uh, which as some might know is, uh, is an acronym for some marketing name. Uh, because apparently they, they thought this, this, uh, this was uh, appropriate uh, naming convention. 
So this was a wide-ranging Chinese intelligence operation that uh, targeted Fortune 500 companies, uh, aerospace industry, defense industry, all over the world. And those, because of this, the visibility that was, uh, that was available to this multitude of companies, uh, they could track like this, this whole, whole cluster of what was going on. And in the, in the ad uh, additional research piece that, that was published uh, soon later on, uh, was the analysis of the further version of Winty malware. So this was this, this link by the, by the malware grouping. Uh, and Noveta in this, uh, in this report, like we had now with Fire and Kaspersky, also put the moderate to high confidence of the Chinese intelligence operation. So we had those links, we had those uh, malware and infrastructure, but now uh, some of you might ask like what happened with the with the targeting and victims from the from the trying to get in game currency to to targeting defense contractors so in fact in 2015 from kaspersky there was another report uh, on the on the winty malware group which directly linked their effort, uh, those efforts to the uh, to the Axiom reporting, and Kaspersky claimed that the, the samples they have seen are, are similar or analogous to what was reported in Operation SMN. Uh, and because of that, uh, because of that, this, they tracked it further as this, this winty activity. But the victimology and targeting has now changed, and the, the targeting also in this Kaspersky visibility moved more towards the pharmaceutical companies. So perhaps a targeting more in line with what we saw from the, from the Noveta report. And very, very, let's say in the, in the short frame, uh, time frame, uh, Symantec uh, published a research on the groups they tracked as a black fly <clears throat> and a black fly, in which they, uh, they talked about the use of the stolen certificates mainly and how these certificates that were obtained from those also video game companies were, were used for uh, malware delivery purpose. And the research indirectly uh, referenced Kaspersky research. So as uh, you might see on the screenshot below, it says that third party vendor published. Uh, and because uh, of the similarity in the, in the malware and the uh, uh, technique of stealing uh, code signing certificates. We had this grouping from Symantec, and now uh, you might get a bit lost in this, so we will start with our first diagram. So essentially what happened and how we, how we arrived at this point is that initially the Winty was discovered by Symantec as a malware group, then we had uh, we had a uh, we had a grouping into the uh, activity group by Kaspersky. So we, uh, so Kaspersky, when they detected this malware, they decided to to uh, track it not just as a detection of an of a sample uh, sample of group like a metropolitan cobalt strength, but as a group. And then it, it resulted in this Winty group. And we, when we go back, like do a round, back to what Symantec was saying, uh, is that Symantec, when it was uh, Winty uh, jo joined with the stolen certificates, they tracked it as Blackfly. And when it was some other custom tooling that, were, that was used in the, in the attacks, it was tracked as Sackfly group. And going further, we can see that since around 2016, more and more vendors started, uh, let's say, jumping on this on this research tray of the uh, of the Winty Winty group. And we had this blog from from Silence now BlackBerry Silence uh, about their um, their uh, research into so-called past CV group that was targeting once again gaming companies. Uh, and the, the link here, unfortunately, the links between the grouping started being a bit more, let's say, disjoint. Because what uh, Silence Team has referenced is that because, uh, because of the similarity in victimology uh, of the stolen certificates victims, so, so which, certificate, which companies were affected by the certificate theft that was used then to 
uh, that was used then to sign this, this malware. Uh, and because the, the, those victims were earlier breached as referenced by other, uh, other vendors as victims of Winti, we had this linking into their PassCV group. As you can see, the, this conclusion that Winti and PassCV are closely related. However, if we, if we take like a step back from this, uh, we actually see here that the, the, this, as I noticed, this link start getting a bit of murky because essentially we started from this tracking by Winti. Okay, so this is a malware specific to, uh, to a given group. But at this point in some vendor reporting, we are, all, we are almost dropping this part of the, of the conversation, let's say. And when we look at this past CV and how it was defined, it was because only of uh, the uh, some certificates that were that were stolen from those companies, but the malware used mainly was uh, of uh, completely of, well not completely but was of a different kind, including so open source software. So what happened in uh, 2017 is that Microsoft took a tackle in this group. And they did quite uh, quite a thing because they uh, they said that because of the uh, of how these uh, objectives and how the how the methods differ between certain representations of Winti, they will take approach that they will start tracking it as two groups. So we had this. This was still when the Microsoft was using this elements name for the for the activity group naming. So we had the barium and lead, and barium represent more uh, this part uh, focus on the, let's say, commercial activity, financially motivated activity, attacking of gaming companies, uh, trying to get this, this scams and going with in-game currency. And we had lead group, which was more focused, let's say, on those high value advanced target industrial espionage and trying to breach into defense contractors and so on. So basically it looked like that, that, uh, that the Microsoft took this grouping of uh, Winti by the malware and broke it down based on the victimology and on the techniques used because they've noticed that for, for, the, uh, for different targets, different, uh, different uh, initial access or de delivery techniques were used, so which is quite interesting. The lead part, which was, let's say, more concerned with serious target, which was quite a bit more direct with their approach, and they tended to just straight up directly send the Winti executable to their victims by phishing mails. On the other hand, the barium group, uh, which was uh, more concerned with money and getting the financial results of their operation, was actually quite proficient in building rapport with their victims, doing social engineering work, uh, building up on the relationships, sending LNK files that, that were used then to, uh, to deliver Winti as a second stage, and so on and so on. So as you hear on the, on the left-hand side of the slide, we have this, this, diamond model, uh, this diamond model note, because when uh, at the beginning of the presentation I've talked about the different, uh, different uh, scenarios or different approaches to grouping. The Microsoft explicitly, even as they mentioned in this group, uh, decided to go the activity group road and do not focus so much on who is behind the keyboard or how the group is internally constructed, just on the representation. Then uh, the Trend Micro also took a, took a, uh, tried to take a job at tracking and uh, defining how Divinity works, but Trend Micro kind of stepped back into this uh, into this idea of uh, of having the having the uh, activity group by the malware. So basically, they tracked the they said they talked about the Wind group, but they tracked the presentation of the malware. And they found a very nice, they did a very nice research about the use of GitHub for command and control communication. So the GitHub repositories were used to host the commands that were fetched by the, uh, by the malware pieces. And as such, the, they represented uh, that it received the commands from the, from the essentially attackers from C2. Uh, Trend Micro went even further because they, they went on to track the infrastructure of the attackers. 
uh, they found this individual that was known as Hack520 on various so uh, social media platforms. Uh, and because of that, they discovered the, the registration scheme uh, and the ranges of the VPS addressing that was used as part of this infrastructure. So we had now this from Trend Macro, this bit of uh, wider picture uh, of having, uh, having uh, both uh, the infrastructure and malware. So perhaps even as they started from the from this very much, let's say, let's say maybe less defined malware-based tracking, they expanded it into into this technical axis of the diamond model into infrastructure and capabilities. And they discovered that, <coughs> pardon, they discovered the guy behind the, this infrastructure is apparently a fan of pigs. He had a pet pig, which is indeed very cute, and he was happy to post it on various social media which actually also helped with, with tracking, tracking them because, uh, because apparently pigs are not so common as pets. Yeah, take your pictures. So this is how it went for the, for the trend micro. Uh, then what happened in terms of, the, in terms of how the understanding of the group was, uh, was developing was that in 2017 we had this uh, report from 401 uh, Threat Research Group. And what happened there is that uh, they, they did actually a few pieces on the, on the Winty, but like the, the cornerstone, the punchline was that they report on burning umbrella. So they tracked the representation or the, the presentation of the, of the Winty in certain victimologies. They tracked down the infrastructure and they came to conclusion that it should, it should be tracked as this, a single umbrella, which means that various intelligence, uh, Chinese intelligence operations uh, are using similar backbone composed of the of the TTPs like using our, our favorite Windy malware uh, and using infrastructure that could be tracked by by certain character characteristics uh, and the and the, the this this backbone is used as an umbrella for various groups like that are called Axiom APT17 Lead Barium Wicked Panda and so on by by different actors but. Uh, initially, it came from the same root, so either the same, uh, the same activity, the same activity in terms of tasking, or, or this is one, uh, this is one organization that creates all those infrastructure and so on. Uh, what is interesting for this report, they put a high confidence in attribution to to this Chinese intelligence apparatus. Uh, now, from from what was published and from my understanding, this is based. Uh, purely on the analysis of the observables, there was no insight like into into they had no internal knowledge about the about the intercepts of something that could that could point them further toward this uh, this assessment. But apparently they had, they felt that they have enough to to link it back to the uh, <clears throat> back to the uh, Chinese intelligence. And since they were not entirely wrong in that. Because by 2018, the United States Department of Justice started getting involved also in tracking of Windy, or maybe not tracking, but rather prosecuting. And there was a first uh, indictment uh, against officers of the uh, Jiangsu Province Ministry of State Security Department. Uh, and in this indictment, we can see that uh, around 2012, Members of the conspiracy, conspiracy installed this Winty malware uh, on the uh, computers host of the industrial company. So interesting thing to note here is that uh, we have, while uh, Kaspersky was initially tracking it when, we, when it was discovered and reached public as a, let's say, commercial, financially motivated operation, we can see that, in fact, even by 2012, this was already an industrial espionage outlet. Uh, similarly, in 2019, we have seen this send of this of this Linux version when the when the Chronicle posted on their blog that there is uh, not only Windows, which is most popular, uh, but uh, but also a Linux version of the Winty Rat, and it dated back to 2015 uh, and to the breaches against against some Vietnamese gaming companies 
So we can see how those both streams, let's say LED and barium in Microsoft terminology, were going in, in parallel. And in 2019, also ASSET published a very extensive piece uh, on the arsenal and the, the activity of the Winting Group. Uh, what I like in this report, they make uh, quite clear that uh, from their perspective, uh, Winty is a group that performed these attacks using techniques and tooling described by them and track, uh, regardless of what is the underlying structure of the group. So once again, similarly to maybe similarly to Microsoft or to other vendors that, that did not care so much about the attribution, they just uh, they just uh, tried to get there by the by grouping up uh, use of certain techniques and use and how it was deployed and also the the, the things that start getting up uh, is that if you remember the supply chains attacks I guess uh, uh, that use for example CC cleaner or Asus firmware update those attacks were also uh, linked to to this activity through deployed. Uh, artifacts and through the techniques used and the and the how the malware was constructed. So we had now by this very quite a bit sprawling activity that involved both supply chain attacks, but delivery by social engineering infrastructure that was based in China and other regions, a lot of victims and so on. And in 2019, also Mandiant came up with this with this quite. Uh, interesting scenario is that this uh, Winty, which they tracked as APT41, is essentially the one operation, but split between the uh, official part, so uh, intelligence officers doing their work, and the moonlighting part, so uh, intelligence officers making money on the side by using the capabilities they have access to. So. Uh, yeah, so uh, as you see on the on the upper screenshot from the report, the they mentioned the barium group and Winty as what constitutes of this APT41, and below we can see this uh, one of the certificates that that was linked to this operation. So actually, uh, Mandiant took a um, opposite approach to what Microsoft was doing with LED and barium. And uh, we can I uh, mark it by this icon of the indictment. They uh, grouped together uh, two branches of the operation, the fin financially motivated part and the industrial espionage one, because they had correlation uh, because they had correlation between uh, used malware, the specific mailing addresses that were used to, to deliver those and so on, and gen generally, Having the having the shared infrastructure that was used to deliver it. Uh, so basically, if you would uh, if you would turn these turn these schemes upside down, you would see the the uh, you would see the division into into lead and barium actors. And further, in 2020, APT41 moniker was actually used by the United States Department of Justice in an, another indictment. Uh, but this one had uh, was way more specific. So uh, earlier we just had uh, this mention of industrial espionage operation uh, using Quinty malware. But now we had explicitly uh, we had explicit uh, explicit indictment, explicit uh, finger pointing into this APT41 operation uh, and pointing out to specific. Uh, specific operators that were that were conducting those operations as a part of the so-called name and shame campaign, so the attempts of the United States government uh, to impose cost on the operations by by publishing their their uh, uh, official names, their their personal details, and as you can hear at the at the bottom of this this part of the indictment. In fact, the, the, we had this uh, confirmed by this, uh, by this official document, United States government grouping uh, the activity by the PlugX, Winty, but also Shadowpad. And so one of, the, uh, one of the malware that was used in the supply chain attack, as far as I remember, uh, for Asus one. Uh, so we had this more clarity. 
<coughs> pardon. And in 2020, also my company, Quo Intelligence, we published a research piece on the uh, sample that we discovered uh, uh, that was used to attack the German uh, German chemical company. Uh, we had this. Uh, we had not only the code similarities, but also this uh, link by stolen certificates. Uh, and we have also discovered how the DNS tunneling was used to, uh, to exfil data and, and as a C2 channel, essentially. Uh, and here, uh, from, from how we, I mean, we also used the Winti group moniker, but we had this very direct link. <coughs> Pardon. We had this very direct link because we found sample that had uh, significant code similarities uh, and significant uh, overlap in the use of stolen certificates. So we came to this very, very, let's say, one-to-one -one direct mapping into the capabilities that were used earlier. Uh, but we saw those, uh, we saw those now deployed against different target, this uh, chemical company, but also South Korean uh, gaming. But in general, when we track back, and you can uh, read it on our blog, when we track back this activity, uh, it went more into this uh, lead uh, branch, let's say, in targeting various uh, German uh, industrial and technology companies. Uh, and interesting, coming uh, to our more recent times, in 2020, uh, Fire I Mandian uh, tracked, uh, published report, and now on tracked as APT41. Uh, against global intrusion, uh, against, uh, against, as I believe, uh, mainly network devices, yeah, vulnerabilities in Citrix NetScaler, Cisco routers, and so on. But what was interesting about this report is uh, it, this is after the indictments by DOJ. So we had this, let's say, official name of APT41 floating around. Uh, but here, uh, the, the tools used were not, uh, were not any more windy, but we had uh, our favorite Cobalt Strike and Metapreter used in those intrusions. So let's say that that by the by the Mandian visibility, uh, apparently they have these capabilities to go a bit deeper and kind of move away from having to having to have the uh, having the the Winti malware included to to track further those capabilities. And also in 20, then in 2022, we had Cyber Reason. Cyber Reason did a very in-depth research on the uh, on the new campaigns that, that they discovered by by tracking the the intrusions where the Winti malware was used. They described in this two-part research how the how the malware was evolved to include more evasive capabilities uh, and so on. And uh, again, they had this high attribution to Wind Group, but it moderate high actually. But this is not very surprising given how, how it was tracked by this, those various malware representation. Uh, and the, it, it showed, uh, even when we go back to the, to the Noveta report, when they described the, uh, the various, uh, various versions of Wind that were going, going further from version, I guess, one to three, we see that after 10 years around, the, the malware is in fact still in development, which kind of speaks to volumes to, to its role in those, in those operations. Uh, and in, also in 2022, we had the report from the, from the group IB, uh, another great vendor, and they, they did this piece using the Mandiant moniker of APT41, and they described a very, very wide-ranging campaign all over the world, Europe, Americas, Asia, Pacific, uh, about the uh, uh, of the APT41 alleged activities, but they grouped this very very widely uh, using uh, both the, the double dragon barium lead uh, monikers, which uh, indicated that they they move more towards this this let's say single single entity single group scenario, and it also resulted in in very wide uh, very wide description of technique tactics and procedure. Uh, apparently, secure injection, also cobalt strike, and again was used, uh, living off the land utilities, uh, and so on and so on. And to kind of finish now, uh, finish now going through through timeline is that in 2022 September, the Department of Human and Health Services, <coughs> United States, has published this briefing about how the how the activity recently uh, unfolded, uh, how it affects the healthcare sector. 
And as you can see here, similarly to the United States in the, the Department of Justice, uh, Department of Justice uh, position, they uh, use the barium winty uh, uh, naming convention, omitting lead one, uh, and they kind of very heavily underscored the, the links to the five-year plans. So the uh, Chinese political documents that describes how the how the, the describes national goals in terms of economic and strategic development. And they uh, and how how it links to the Chinese intelligence operators. Okay, so that leaves us again with this question: Who is this Winty hacker, and and what can we do with it? And when, if you were taking notes by the by the vendor and by which which elements were used to to link those malware together, unfortunately, we can come to conclusion that that by by most of the time it was mainly tracked by the uh, the Winty malware sample and that there was involvement of stolen certi digital certificates to, to sign the code, which is, of course, not much either in the case of the defense and in terms of adversary emulation. Uh, because when we look at the, at the kill chain representation uh, of the activity, we would be somewhere between weaponization, so, so understanding how, the, uh, how the, this tooling and code was developed, and maybe delivery as in as in trying to pass it with the stolen certificates but if it goes to to get installed on uh, on the systems we protect uh, it essentially goes through exploitation phase it gets uh, gets installed and we are we are blind in those spots if you want to also represent uh, would defend and uh, have the have the understanding of the whole kill chain so I think we should we should rephrase the question into into no uh, into not who is Winty or who is behind the keyboard keyboard, but because of how your uh, security organization works, how can you define this group on your own, and how can you uh, how can you make sure that it fits your needs of operation? So uh, uh, so we might do it with the analytical models. So instead of, of uh, getting stuck on the APT41 or the double dragon barium lead monikers, uh, what I think that both internal intelligence teams or any intelligence team that is tasked with, with tracking this kind of activity should do uh, is essentially create an analytical model that will act as a bucket to catch the, uh, catch the operations, the intrusions that, that fits your needs. So. Uh, um, instead of, of having this uh, having this trying to having this one to one fit, <coughs> I think the tracking should come from understanding of what elements do you really need from Winty. So what was the requirement? Was it was it mentioned by the CSO that he wants to have this information by the group? Did it come up in the Tiber exercise that, that you uh, you as a red team need to simulate these activities? What exactly are the elements? Uh, you need to focus on, and either how it will uh, impact your defense posture because you will be doing a threat, some threat modeling or gap analysis, or how, uh, how else you can even use it for, for having, having the defense efforts. And the solution, therefore, is to make your own Winti, Winti model. And accounting for the, int, uh, for the three elements, essentially, of threat definition, so intent, opportunity, and capability. Think about what do you want to, to have achieved uh, with this, uh, or how do you want to see this group? So are you more interested in targeting of this industrial sector or gaming and internet content companies? Uh, what capabilities do you need to track? Do you need to be so focused on this, on this Winty model? Or do you want to include also supply chain attacks? And so on, and to think about why are, will you be why will you be following this reporting when you have this activity group? So will you need it to to check if the if the next supply chain attack that gets detected uh, is also related to this, and and you might need to take a deeper look if you want to check for in general for the use of code signing certificates as a vector of of making making malware more evasive. Do you do you see very heavily that your environment is infected with various iterations of Winty and you need to have robust defenses? 
this will all ultimately influence how how you need to track or how do you you might want like to to track the group uh, by by its um, by its manners so when we grow, when we take into consideration all those uh, all those uh, examples and uh, presentation of activity like uh, the techniques from the uh, targeting used to the techniques through the infrastructure we can have this this very wide uh, very wide list and very wide understanding essentially something similar to with what was done by ESET and uh, group IB of having this this let's say mosaic of different factors and when we break it down into the diamond model representation, so when we break it down into this adversary, victimology, infrastructure, uh, and capabilities part on the, <coughs> pardon, on the, on the each vertex, vertex of the model, we can start thinking about uh, what is important to us uh, and what is not so much. So when we are uh, so when we looked at the at the top vertex, so the adversary, uh, we have from one side those operators that were very much concerned with the with the financial gains, so they were stealing this in-game currency and so on. We had also this apparent foreign intelligence apparatus that was tasked with the uh, collection of industrial espionage, <clears throat> and when we look at the capabilities. Again, we have quite a few a few features that uh, that when uh, grouped together will uh, will kind of uh, will kind of be will allow us to be able to to pick and choose what what matters to us. So to give you a more specific example, if we look at the uh, the core intelligence block and what we did uh, is that we had this this uh, kind of specific uh, representation in mind. That took the took the victimology, the use of malware, the specific tactics as stolen certificates, uh, and uh, it created, let's say, its own activity cluster. So, because we we did not have visibility, like from signal or, or human intelligence, into who is the adversary, this is not so important. This is not by this point, like whether this was this financially motivated folks. These were seasoned intelligence officers. We, we do not need to know that at this point. But we can see the representation that they were doing this mm, DNS tunneling. They were using this specific, uh, specific techniques of delivery. They had code similarities and so on. And because of tracking the uh, various malware representation, we can have this. Uh, we can have this our own cluster that fits our needs and allow us to, to make informed decisions about whether the next intrusion or the next campaign or the next discovered piece of malware uh, is in fact what, what fits into our understanding. And I would very heavily recommend this approach because ultimately when you are using someone else's naming, whether you, you are using APT41, when you're using WinT, Double Dragon and so on, uh, you do not have this control over, over what is going on. Because let's imagine you are a red team, you are doing the threat intelligence based ethical red teaming exercise, and uh, be, uh, you get from the threat intelligence report that, that this APT41 is, is a group of interest, so you need to emulate that. But essentially what happens there is you kind of give, give a space to Mandiant to have an input into your exercise, because the next report might, might come up like in the, in the next month, in the next week and so on, and it will turn into, into kind of feeding into your process. As opposed to that, when you have your own cluster, either for defense or, or offensive research, uh, you can have your own understanding and even you can go further like for the red team to, to develop further, pardon, further capabilities based on the blueprint that will be prepared. And I believe that is more or less all from my side. I would just like to, I probably these references are barely visible because as you might have noticed, there were quite a few reports that I went through. And I like to congratulate all of those teams on the great work, threat intelligence they work and they were doing. And with that, thank you very much for your time. And